navigate to Vegas. Las Vegas. I do not understand what you are saying. Navigate to Las Vegas. I still do not understand you. Navigate to Las Vegas. I've no idea what you are on about. How come you don't understand what I'm saying? I'm sorry, but I don't understand a word you are saying. Perhaps if you said it with less of a Lancashire twang. Navigate to Las Vegas. Please. Please. Navigating to Las Vegas, Nevada. Finally. At the roundabout, take the second exit. What roundabout? There isn't a roundabout. At the roundabout, take the second exit. There's no roundabout. What? What roundabout? We're in the middle of nowhere. Don't raise your voice at me. I'm not raising my voice. Definitely no roundabout. I'm sick and tired of your attitude. That's it. Don't you dare walk away when I'm talking to you. I'm in the Western Desert in the USA, which is actually made up of three different hot deserts. These are the Mojave, Sonoran, and the Chihuahuan deserts. In total, the area covers 200,000 square kilometers. The Western Desert includes parts of California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. Population is low, and nearly half live in Phoenix and Tucson, both in Arizona, and Las Vegas and Henderson in Nevada. The only way out of here is to climb that hoodoo. Some of these rock formations can be as high as 45 meters the same height as the canopy in the rainforest. This one is five. One mistake could result in a twisted ankle or a graze. Don't try this at home. I'm still on the rim of the Ajo copper mine in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. This thing behind me is two and a half kilometers across and at its lowest point is 300 meters deep. It's quite staggering. There are just so many minerals that can be exploited here in the desert, ranging from zinc, coal, obviously copper, but quite often it causes conflicts with local people particularly when you're trying to extract uranium. You know, there's that danger of it contaminating local water supplies. And as a lot of the water here comes from underground aquifers, that is a real risk. One of the biggest problems in the desert, economically, is its water supply. There's just not an awful lot of it. And it wasn't until they discovered underground aquifers that it made all this mining possible. Of course, the other problem out here in the desert is power. But the ingenuity of the Americans means that even this problem has been solved. With an average of 3,872 hours of sunshine, it's not surprising that the Western Desert is perfect for solar energy. This solar plant at Red Rock in Arizona covers an area of one and a half kilometers square. 182,000 solar panels feed 40 megawatts of energy into the grid to power homes and businesses. But it isn't just solar energy that meets the demand of the Western Desert. Surprisingly, they also use hydroelectric power. Not bad for a place that doesn't receive very much precipitation.
Just behind me is Lake Mead, which is the largest man-made reservoir in the US in terms of volume. It was created in 1936 when the Hoover Dam was built, just that way a little bit. So if we were to draw a map of this area, we'd have Lake Mead. And as we know, Lake Mead was created by the construction of the Hoover Dam. 30 miles to the west, you've got Las Vegas, which receives 37 million visitors each year. Flowing into the back of Lake Mead, you've got the Colorado River. And then you've also got another major lake, Lake Powell, which attracts lots of tourists each year. And then in between these two places, you've got the Grand Canyon. And all in all, tourism accounts for the major income in the Western Desert. Anyway, back to the Hoover Dam. 1.3 million people benefit from the 4 billion kilowatts of energy produced by this dam. 80% of the Colorado River water is used for farming in this area to produce vegetables, lemons, peppers and grapes and eventually feed into the wine industry, which is incredibly prosperous. But it's a little strange because farming only actually accounts for 10% of the economy in this area. Dams like this also cause some problems. They change the temperature of the water and this affects ecosystems. And because the flow rate has changed because of the building of the dam, less sediment is moved downstream. And this can affect species such as the willow flycatcher. I'm in the Western Desert helping you navigate your GCSE. With a low population density of less than one person per square kilometre, parts of this desert lack surface roads. If your car breaks down out here, it could be all over. In 2015, an elderly tourist decided to venture off-road in the Mojave Desert. In 50 degree temperatures, his car broke down and unfortunately he died. Adapting to the hot desert environment is a challenge. Due to extremely high temperatures, there is no settled population in some areas. 50 degrees is right at the survival limit for plants and land in Death Valley has a very low carrying capacity. My journey has taken me right across the Western Desert and I'm now on the last leg, the road to Vegas. At the roundabout. Don't start. Finally arrived in Vegas. Oh, no one's going to believe that. We're clearly in Blackpool. Look, I'm not doing this anymore. This is rubbish. Bear Grylls doesn't have this. 